Hey guys, welcome back to another tactic testing video. Today's tactic is going to be the tactic that I'm doing in non-league to legend with Liverpool. I've played a few matches now with it and it's pretty overpowered, I think. We've scored near enough 20 goals in two games at the start of that season and Haaland is a machine and has scored 10 goals, I think, in the two of the games. So pretty dominant start for the Liverpool team in that but <coughs> we'll see how we get on uh, in this video with it. So this is the tactic, it's a very attacking mentality. In possession we are slightly shorter passing, extremely high tempo, we work the ball into the box and we hit low crosses. In transition, just simple, distribute to centre backs and counter and counter press. Out of possession, we've got a much higher line of engagement. We're pressing much more often and we're preventing the short goal kick distribution. So into the actual roles, we've got a sweeper keeper. The only thing that's been added to him is tackle harder. We've got two complete wing backs. The right complete wing back, the only thing that's been added to him is take more risks and close down more. The left wing back is take more risks and tackle harder. For those of you that don't know, the only these ones here, these come with that role. These two have just been added, so I won't be reading all them out because if you pick that, you'll get them anyway. The two the two ball playing defenders are both set to defend with stay wider and tackle harder. I also forgot to say the two complete wing backs are on attack and the sweeper keepers on attack. We've got the deep line playmaker on defend, pass it shorter, close down more, tackle harder and mark tighter. The box to box midfielder on support, take more risks, dribble more, shoot less often, move into channels, tackle harder and might mark tighter. The Mazala on attack, pass it shorter, dribble more, shoot less often, tackle harder, mark tighter. And then we have two pressing forwards on each side of the advance forward, both with roam from position and move into channels. And then the attacking, uh, the advanced, sorry, the pressing forwards are both on support, the advanced forward on attack, take more risks, tackle harder and mark tighter. That's the rundown of the tactic, very attacking. So I'll ex I'm expecting a lot of goals, but also a lot of goals let in. The teams that we've picked today, are Arsenal and Everton in the Premier League, Lyon and Strasbourg in Ligue 1, and Milan and Verona in the Serie A. So I'll quickly holiday the season and I'll see you back at the end of the season for the results of all six teams. Hey guys, we're back at the end of the season. We can now have a wee look into the seasons that each team have had, so we might as well start off with Verona. Verona were predicted to finish 11th, I actually think they were lower than that, I'm sure, uh, but as you can see, Verona finished first, scoring 104 goals, conceding 60, goal difference of 44, I think that is an awesome season for Verona. They played awesome, they're in the Champions League. Top goal scorer was Giovanni Simeone. Simeone with 26 goals. He looks like a really good player. He's not going to set the world alight, but this tactic just suits him. Finished in fourth place in the league, got knocked out in the third round of the Coppa Italia by Inter Milan. Fair enough, Inter Milan are an amazing team. So, Verona, success for them. AC Milan, as you've seen when we were in Verona, we finished first with them. Well, we look at their goals, 122 goals scored, 35 against. That is, that is amazing. That is just phenomenal. 122 goals in, in one season. Goal difference of 87. That's one of the highest I think I've ever seen. So, this tactic seems to be pretty overpowered in Italy. 
if they only had a few better players, then I feel that they could have done a, well, a wee bit better. They were... I'm still gobsmacked at how much Verona has done in this save. But two Italian teams have done very, very well. So we'll jump over to France now with Strasbourg. Strasbourg finished second. Stra- Strasbourg was supposed to finish bottom half of the table, but they finished second. Eight points behind uh, eventual winners PSG. But as you can see again, 127 goals, 40 against. Goal difference of 87, that is better than PSG, minus the goals against. PSG only let in 20. But Strasbourg had a fantastic season. They got knocked out in the 11th round of the French Cup, which is pretty disappointing. But apart from that, fantastic season for them. By the looks of it, they got into second position and never really let go of it. They did drop down to third for a wee bit, but they weren't letting go of that second place. Next, Lyon. Lyon finished third. They got one point deducted, so they would have still finished third anyway. They were predicted to finish second, I believe, so they did drop down, but they still done fantastic. Scoring 85 goals, letting in 36. Goal difference of 49. They probably just had a bang, like an average season for them, to be completely honest looking at it. They did, however, come second in the Europa League and in the French Cup, which is pretty gutting for them, but done very well in Europe. I forgot to see how an AC Milan got in Europe. They, oh, AC Milan actually won the Coppa Italia. They were knocked out of Champions League at the group stage. But they went into the Europa League and they ended up beating Leon in the final. Pretty decent for them. Next, we'll have a look at Matty Marsner. Who, to be completely honest, had a bad time of it. In the league anyway, as you can see, they won the FA Cup and the Carabao Cup. Finishing 7th. Arsenal, I think, predicted to finish round about there anyway. Had a bit of a poor season. Arsenal fans obviously wanting to get back into Europe. Arsenal, they only scored 76 goals. Let in 52, which is more than double of Liverpool who ended up winning the league. So, pretty disappointing season in the league for Arsenal, but they're back in Europe, which is always good to see. I think i seen Eddie Nketia was their top goal scorer in the league, yeah. So, pretty disappointing from an Arsenal point of view. Next, we'll have a look at Everton. Everton was supposed to finish 11th, they finished 5th. So, another really good season for the underdog. They were knocked out in the 5th round of the FA Cup by Chelsea and knocked out in the quarterfinals of the Carabao Cup against Leeds. Everton scored 97, which is a lot better than Arsenal. Letting in 57 and a goal difference of 40. So, they're in the Europa League, same as Arsenal. Arsenal only in it because they won the Europa Leagues and stuff. But as you can see, Eden Aketi and Dele Alli, two of our teams, two of our team there, assist Nathan Patterson with 22. That's phenomenal. Average rating, Odegaard's up there. He's in there with assists. Player of the match, Odegaard. Yellow cards, all of our guys there. We'll have a look at the stats of France. Kevin Gamario, Gamario, 47 goals he scored. Wow. This obviously suits him to a T. And then Moussa Dembele with 26. That is phenomenal. I think that's one of the best strike rates I've ever seen. Uh, another couple of players in the assists. Again, another wing back. And that one is a striker. Second in the average rating. And... Again, a lot of yellow cards. Last but not least, we'll have a look at the stats of the Serie A. Simone and Olivier Giroud, two of the best, but Immobile, who is fantastic in his game anyway, scoring quite a lot there too, and average rating, dominated by Milan and Verona, and then a couple of Milan players in there again, Florenzi and Hernandez. Surprisingly, no one on the yellow card list, and Giroud is on the player of the match. So, not going to lie, 
I think this is a really, really good tactic. I think you build your team around this tactic. You get a really good striker and surround him with a couple of good players in a couple of seasons. I think you could be romping whatever league you're in. So probably Arsenal is the only disappointment. Leon had an average season. I think the rest were all amazing. And uh, they all had a very successful season with this tactic. So I would say this tactic is a lot better than the last one that we tested out. A lot more teams were successful with it. And it was good to see the amount of goals that all the teams scored. Just looking at it there, Eddie Nketiah scored 39 goals for Arsenal. The next was Lacazette with 22. After that, the next one was Odegaard with 13. So it is a bit of a overpowered striker formation. You get a couple of strikers that are really good at finishing, they'll score you the goals. So I'll leave that episode here. If you liked that in any way, please hit the like button. If you'd like to see more tactic testing or football manager content on the channel, please subscribe, turn notifications on, and thank you very much for watching.